If you listen obediently to the voice of God, your God, and heartily obey all his commandments that I command you today, God, your God, will place you on high, high above all the nations of the world. All these blessings will come down on you and spread out beyond you because you have responded to the voice of God, your God. God's blessing inside the city, God's blessing in the country, God's blessing on your children, the crops of your land, the young of your livestock, the calves of your herd, the lambs of your flocks. God's blessing on your basket and bread bowl. God's blessing in your coming in, God's blessing in your going out. God will defeat your enemies who attack you. They'll come at you on one road and run away on seven roads. Sierra and I met in high school and we were pretty good friends. We had an art class together and that's kind of where we became friends. We were without a doubt the oldest kids in the entire art class. Everyone else was freshmen and we were juniors. We just put it off so long to take it that we had to take it at that point. So we took it, we sat next to each other every day and we became pretty close. I always had a little bit of a crush on her but she never really reciprocated and that's okay. It worked out in the end. But we were always very good friends in high school. We both went away to college and she we she went one direction, I went the other, and we didn't really talk, we didn't hang out for six years, seven years. I graduated, moved back here, started working, and I added her on Instagram. When I added her on Instagram, I got a message back saying, Cole, are you in town? And I just happened to be in town working. I just bought a new boat and I really want to go to the lake so I invited her to come to the lake with me. We went to the lake, had a good time, Melissa came with us and then my cousin RJ and his wife met us out there. We had a great day and the rest is kind of history. After we decided we were going to go on the lake or after the, our day at the lake we had to wait about a week you know couldn't, couldn't be too over aggressive. So I waited about a week and uh, we decided to hang out again. I went up to her house and we ordered pizza and drank wine and we had a really good time. And that was really the first, the first date. Hello, my little boo. I've been asked some questions here today. What was Cece like as a little girl? And of course, this picture comes to mind always for me because it really epitomizes who you were as a little girl. You were obviously adorable and you were also very headstrong can't imagine where you get that from and you're just your little face when you grabbed onto that doorknob is just all about you and um, as, as I think about your relationship with Cole and how you've grown um, I, I see that that you're much more balanced and and Cole is so good for you and you're so good for him because both of you balance each other uh, emotionally, lovingly, and caringly. Um, you can be a handful sometimes and I got to see that as your dad while you were growing up. Um, and um, it's just precious to be seeing you so happy with, with Cole and with your relationship and and with all your responsibilities that both of you have and the time that you take for each other as well and your little trips that you take together, just the two of you, and spend time together. So I knew it was time. I knew she was getting impatient, which I was okay with. I don't know that I was okay with it, but I, I was okay with her getting impatient because it meant that it was time. She, she wasn't expecting it. She thought it was going to be a little bit longer, and I kind of sold it to her that it was going to be a little bit longer, like, oh, midsummer, or something like that. And I decided to take her on a hike. I had the ring, I had everything, I had it made, custom band, used some of, the, some of my grandmother's diamonds that are one of her wedding rings uh, to make the diamonds in the band. I was in love with it. It was, it was perfect, without a doubt. So 
I asked her if we would go on a hike together. I had our moms come up with a sign. We did, did it all out. My sister and my best friend Jansen helped us, or he helped me. They took a bottle of champagne and the sign and rose petals and everything up to Red Rock Canyon to a hike uh, at a waterfall. And I convinced her that I wanted to go for a hike, which I don't know how she'd believe me because I'm not a hiker. So picked her up from work. We drove up there. Uh, I got out of the truck. Jansen's truck was parked three away from mine. We hiked all the way up to the top of the waterfall. There's a sign there, chalkboard sign that says, "I will always, it was always you. She walks down, sees the sign, sees the rose petals. As I'm shooing people away, as we're walking up there, Jansen and Cassie are hiding, taking pictures of us. She walks down in the middle of the rose petals and starts looking around, looking for a proposal. I had no idea there was her own proposal. Turns around, I have my little speech prepared, and she starts bawling. She has no recollection of what I said. I thought it was pretty cute. I worked on it for a long time. I finally got down on one knee after my little speech, and she was still crying. I opened up the ring box and asked her to marry me. <laughs> she was crying so much, <laughs> but I wasn't sure if she was actually going to marry me or not. I couldn't tell if there were tears of joy or tears of sadness. She eventually said yes after through all the tears, and we celebrated. As, as you move forward in your life with Cole and, and you're coming up on your, on your wedding date, and as you're watching this, um, I love Cole, and if I didn't love Cole, I certainly wouldn't give your hand to a man that I didn't approve of, and I certainly approve of Cole. He's, he's driven, he's motivated, he brings out the best in you, and he also pushes you um, to do different things, to do things that you haven't done before, and, and he brings out your joy, and, and that, is, that is really special uh, for the two of us. She never shuts cabinets. She will go in, get something out of the cabinet, use it or eat it, whatever it is, put it back, and the cabinet door will always be open. Never fails, never fails. I walk into them all the time, I close them all the time. Um, what do I do? I think I do everything that I do drives her crazy. Pretty sure. I secretly kind of love the fact that she falls asleep on the couch every night. 8 p.m., she's out. She will not be awake after 8 p.m. But she gets mad at me if I fall asleep on the couch and she leaves me on the couch. So a little ironic, but I love her for it. So who is funnier? I think I'm probably funnier than she is, but what makes me funny is her laugh. When she starts giggling and she can't stop and she starts with the evil laugh, Jody will appreciate that one. When she starts doing the evil laugh, you can't get her to quit. So I think I get her laughing, but her laughing makes me funny. So I think we complement each other well there. I think that, that what I've seen um, with with Cole in your life is is that that you laugh your belly laugh when you're with Cole and that's that's precious. There's really only a few people in the world that that can bring out that belly laugh in you, um, and sometimes your mischievous laugh. And Cole is certainly one of those people, as is your little brother. Um, that, that you guys you guys just share that bond and it's such a special bond with each other um, and and it's your mom and I are both very very grateful that that you found somebody like Cole that can make you belly laugh like that and the fun that you have together and the hunting and not just the hunting but again your little personal trips that you take and spend time with each other who's a better driver have you ever driven in a car with Sierra Wells? Yeah. Uh, you will guarantee you, I will guarantee you that I'm a better driver. I'm actually surprised she hasn't gotten in more accidents. Multitasker, Sierra's for sure a better multitasker than I am, no question. She can work out, take care of the dogs, do everything all at the same time, and I have to sit there and focus and do something. 
So she's for sure a better, better multitasker than I am. The thing that I want you to know the most is that your mom and I love you very much and love you deeply. And uh, again, we're happy that you found somebody that you're so in love with that loves you so much and appreciates you for who you are. Um, the thing that I want you to know the most in any relationship is always, always communicate. Always cherish each other and never take each other for granted. Um, and sometimes it'll happen and you'll find little glitches that you'll have to get straightened out and work with each other on and work out with each other. Um, and take those opportunities to, to seek a deeper understanding of each other. Who said I love you first and how? I actually think that I told her that I loved her first. I don't remember how, but I was definitely the first one to tell her that. There's nothing that I'm not excited for. I'm excited that we bought a house together. I'm excited that all the little mini vacations we take. I'm excited to have kids at some point. I love our dogs. I'm excited to be our dog parents. I'm, there's, I'm just excited for our life. There's nothing that I, I, nothing I can't do without her and nothing she can't do without me. She means everything to me. She's my world. She's the most important person in my life and I love her more than any, I love her more than I love myself and hunting, which is a hard feat to beat, but I do. And I love that she hunts with me. I love our life together and I couldn't imagine anyone, myself with anyone else or would, nor would I ever want to be with anyone else. I'm trying to think of like something like smart and quick and witty, you know, like something that she does. Who's funnier? I'm for sure funnier. No question. I'm without a doubt much funnier than Sierra is. So that was that was how I proposed. Yeah, that was kind of cute, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. Keep laughing. <laughs> I swear to God, I'll throw you in the fucking pond. <laughs> I swear to God, I'll throw you in the fucking pond. <laughs> <laughs> you got shit in your eyelashes and I'm going to take it out for you. Oh, love, and, love and cherish each other. And in good times as well, even more so in, in the difficult times in life. And there will be difficult times and there will be beautiful times and, and cherish both of them and, and love each other and lean on each other always. And don't be afraid to ask each other for help when, when it's necessary. You will both step into a new life together with each other and be able to lean on each other as well as those around you. Um, and you will have a, a blessed, beautiful, happy marriage and just stay together and love, love together and have fun together and don't let anything ever creep in between you or creep in between your love for each other. We love you both and wish you all the happiness in the world and God's blessing to both of you. I want you to know that I love you more than anything. You're my best friend, you're my heart, you're my soul, and I could never live a day without you.